All right, so as I said, uh, every, every blog could, uh, every site could have a, a blog, and every site should have a blog if you care about SEO, getting, getting found. Uh, so you might think, well, I don't quite have an idea of what to write about. So here, we're going to do an activity for a little bit uh, to, to address that. So uh, what you want to do is log into Blackboard and then go to the um, assignment section and I've got the new assignment available. Uh, and then you, uh, you can get it from the web design folder. Yes, so log into our class and then go over to the assignments and the brand new one, number seven, blogging. So open that file and the assignment's already there, but the first thing we need to do before we start the assignment is this part here about the setup. So there's a link there that you need to follow. Just go ahead and click that link. It's case sensitive and so forth. So just click on it and let it open up in your web browser. So it's under the blogging assignment setup item number one. Go ahead and click that link. That should open you up. So this should let all of us connect to this file. As soon as I load it up here, I can show you what to do. But this, uh, this is going to be a file where we can all write into. Here we go. So um, at the top here, you know, it's uh, that in the space below, write your name, the name of your site, and a brief sentence, what your site is about, and we will then brainstorm your ideas for a blog. So before you can make any changes here, because if I click and try to write, it doesn't, doesn't let me. It might pop up to let you right there, edit the document. But at the top, we've got edit in browser. So click edit in browser there. And now that'll unlock it for you to be able to edit here. So what this will do is it'll give everyone access to the file here, so be careful about stepping on other people's toes. You can just click and then press enter and give yourself a space. And kind of like my example here, um, I, I wrote my name, I wrote my site, and then I wrote a sentence of what my site is about. So let's take a moment, like you know, one or two minutes, just do the same thing. Put your name, put your website, your, your GoDaddy WordPress site, and put one sentence about what is your site about. When we've done with when we're done with that, then we'll talk about well. Here's some ideas of what you can write about. So remember, everyone's connected to this. Don't accidentally change someone else's text. You want to click. Uh, on a spot, press enter a couple of times, give yourself some space, and then add your content. So, my name, I am, what is that about? What's that? Just the name, all of the name of your site. So what we're using here is Word Online. Uh, if you have a Hotmail account or an Outlook account or Xbox or whatever, a Microsoft account, they have a free version of Office and Excel and PowerPoint that you can use online for free. That's what we're using right here. Um, so you can set it up also like this to give other people access to your document. So this would be great to work with other people to collaborate on something. Um, Google has something like this as well, Google Drive. In their whole Google Drive and Google Docs system, they've got an ability for people to collaborate on documents. So right here I'm just uh, using this one, and so we'll take a moment, go ahead and add your content. Notice that it's not even required for you to sign in. Anyone can use it anonymously. Or if you sign in with your credentials, and everyone actually should have credentials because remember early on we created that um, 
that that Google Analytics account and the and the Bing tool, toolbox. So if you sign in, that's fine. If not, that's okay. So take a moment to fill in your piece, and then we'll go on. All right, so let me just give you one minute or so, and then we'll go on. All right, raise your hand if you finished your part. Okay, good.
All right, so we're going to say at this point um, we're going to finish. Uh, the document should be locked at the moment. That's okay if you didn't uh, write everything you wanted, but this is enough for this point. Um, I'm going to take a quick look at these, and then the idea is to uh, brainstorm about what we can or what you can write about. I'll give opinions, and if you have any, then you can also contribute. But let's see. Um, okay, so over here, Christian, I would say, okay, so your site is about providing customers with excellent advertisement. Just reload this here. All right, so one of the ways I'm going to write my comments in italics. Uh, one of the ways that you can um, build the authority of someone hiring you, you know, for better advertisements is to show examples of what you've done before. So perhaps a monthly blog posts about past customers. So you might have a portfolio in the site, but I wouldn't use the portfolio to show to write a lot. I would use the blog where I can where you can go more into detail about the particular work, what you did to accomplish the work. So here, um, the process, the results, your tools or advice. So on a monthly basis, depending on how much experience you have and how many past customers you have, you could be writing on this regular basis what, your, what you've accomplished. So that's one idea there for, for blogging, uh, for past customers. Uh, in the world of advertising, that's such a big medium there. So you could be sharing tips and advice on what works in advertising, like uh, there's that whole discussion about the different forms of, of marketing, what works, you know, the appeal to fear, the appeal to authority, you know, those sorts of things. So, um, you know, monthly blog, monthly advice blog <coughs> on tips, techniques, that sort of thing to educate people. Uh, so if you've got something that you're publishing every month about free tips and techniques and so forth, that'll entice people to come back to your site, perhaps. So those are some ideas I've got for that, for your site there with that uh, topic. Anyone have any other maybe ideas to add here? Okay, well, let's see the next one here. Okay, so your, yours is about veils here, Fili. So what I would say here, uh, there's so much history about the veils, I'm sure. So a monthly blog post, monthly posts uh, about the history of veils. I'm sure they've got a long history. Uh, wh where do they come from? Why do people use them? And so forth. So you could write 100 words on that every month. Uh, so history on the veils. Um, you could also be talking about uh, the, the history of your own company, of your own company selling veils. 
So why did you? You might have some idea already a little bit in the in the about us and that's for and that sort of thing, but under the blog is where you can add to it a little bit more every month, uh, maybe showcasing like who are the people behind the company, who are the people of the company. Or uh, testimonials. Put testimonials in the blog with your own comments. So not just what they wrote, but you know, write about, add to what they wrote so that you can um, write something new and meaningful in the blog. Any uh, any comments or opinions on on any more ideas on on his topic maybe? Okay, Benjamin. Importing and exporting merchandise. Well, I have an idea there about the type of merchandise. So, you know, posts posts about some of the merchandise. For example, um, uh, something interesting. What was the most interesting thing? What was the most interesting thing exported or imported that month? You know, what came through the, the company that month? Um, maybe something interesting, something funny. Um, so once a month with, with pictures, you know, because it's it's the merchandise would probably be interesting to look at. So writing 100 words with some pictures, what was that merchandise that was um, imported or exported that particular month? And when you write here about advice, that'd be great also. You know, one tip that month, you know, or we could say the top three tips for importing merch. And every month, you know, you put three tips or two tips or whatever, or one tip. You know, one tip, 100 words, um, every month, you know, properly paying the taxes or properly um, packaging it and all of that. So that's educating people how to do something. And then it also shows that your company does it. <clears throat> and they do it well because you're giving all of this advice to show that you know what it is, how to do it. So over here, Carlos, there's a lot of ideas uh, on yours because there's just so many endeavors here, you're rock climbing, mountaineering, and so forth. So um, discuss new outdoor locations uh, so, like a travel log. A travel log is a travel log. Travel log is a um, travel log articles on locations. Uh, so, travel log is is like a um, uh, like a brochure of a particular place. Like here is all about Big Sur here is all about you know Mount Miguel or whatever uh, so it's about a particular location maybe some of its history some of the notable some of the notable um, features of it uh, so sort of really giving people an idea that have never been there and maybe want to go there one day why would I want to go to that location so a travel log articles on locations that that you have experience on because you'll probably write better posts on things that have been that you have experienced and then that'll show through in the writing and get people to uh, to read more and then ultimately uh, complete the action that you want them on the on the site you know sign up for the tour or or whatever it is you want them to do on the site so really a lot about what you would be blogging about, in my opinion, would be these experiences. So, posts on past experiences. 
which are in chart pictures, right? Exactly, sharing lots of media. So that would include pictures or if any video was done. You know, the text will help paint the picture, but then the the pictures of the video really enhance it. And I'm sure a lot have been collected throughout the the adventures. How how many uh, seconds or minutes do you recommend that videos uh, have to be in order to use them in Facebook or nothing else? Because when when I put nine, mm -hmm. that was like one minute and ten seconds, and that took long to to upload. Yeah, I'm not. That's the, the problem with that is the speed of your internet connection. Wow. So if you've got a one minute long video and a five minute long video, the five minute long one is going to take longer to upload because it depends on your provider. If you've got Cox or AT&T or whatever, it's going to depend on their speed. So I don't think there's limits on Facebook of the video and on YouTube there isn't really limits either. Uh, if you were an experience, what is, what, what is better? In my experience, uh, it looks like nowadays a lot of us have very short attention spans. So even if you've got a really good video of five minutes, seven minutes, and you think this is a lot of great information, people are maybe going to watch one minute of it. Maybe they'll jump around a little bit and maybe jump to the end. So it's hard to really make longer videos that, have, that capture your attention the whole time, especially if you don't have experience in video editing because then you don't know what to cut and what to keep and so forth. So it's a good idea to shoot for videos that are 30 to seconds to 60 seconds long, you know, half a minute to a minute. That way you get the practice about what can I say that's important in one minute. Because think about the commercials you see on TV. None of them are five minutes long. Ten seconds. They're 10 seconds, 30 seconds. Sometimes on the Super Bowl, they're one minute. At the movie theater, they're one minute. So think about what you can accomplish video-wise in a short time. All right, it's a little... Um, so this is a restaurant. So you've got here, allow customers to review their experiences. That's good. You might even create some um, video content. So the for your Nora's restaurant, you could have um, video logs about, rev about customer reviews. So very simply with, with your mobile device, it doesn't have to be a professional camera with your phone, it's fine. These things are really powerful nowadays. You know, you, you, you set it up, you record someone for a few seconds, uh, that's their testimonial on the video, and then you also write something about it on the blog post. And that's something that you could do, that you could put together uh, without a lot of hassle once a month. Because again, our, our target is going to be a new blog post once a month. Not for the assignment, but for you when you g leave the class and you continue to do this once a month in 100 words. So a restaurant, again, so taking a cue from, from my client, <coughs> educating people on the food. So the, you know, the dish of the month. You could write about a particular dish like its history, its ingredients, what it means to Nora, etc. So every month you put a great looking picture and a few words, a hundred words, and there's your blog post. And that uh, is really useful, I know from experience, because when uh, reviewers, you know, when critics review the restaurants that I work with, if they're able to pull information from your blog posts, like the text or the photos, that helps their article be more accurate because they're getting information right from your site instead of having to either craft it themselves or getting it secondhand. If you're writing your own content on your blog about your own topic, you're a first, you're a fir what do they call it, a first hand or a first person um, source, first hand source. So I could easily see that, the, the dish of the month. Every month is a picture and some text about a particular meal. Okay, Carlos over here about uh, web design and tools and so forth. That's perfect for having, like in my example of my company, we had the uh, top 10 WordPress 
or top three WordPress plugins, that could be a series. Uh, you know, a series of series of top five, you know, X, top five plugins, top five themes, top five websites of whatever. A series of top five, you know, tools. This would also work well in conjunction with the portfolio, where again, uh, the portfolio shows off some of your work, but you don't perhaps go into a lot of deepness at the portfolio page. Uh, in the blog posts, the blog section is where you could take a particular work that you've done and then really delve into it about the techniques and the experience of it, the pitfalls of it. So the... Um, we could call this the portfolio deep dive. So that's um, expanding on the work presented in the portfolio. Just getting deeper into that particular client or that particular work and just everything that went into it. Right, Joe, over here, uh, what I see where you mention information on reputable agents, that'd be a great thing to really get into detail about. So, um, posts on the reputable agents. What makes them reputable? What has been their experience that you are able to recommend them to people that are coming to your company for your? Uh, for your um, services. Um, so their experiences, their experience, their uh, their background, backgrounds or credentials or credits. And over here about uh, provides the tools of creating acting reels. So that could be advice, the monthly advice column. <coughs> you know, do's and don'ts of the acting reel. That could be that could be an ongoing an ongoing um, post series there. So you see we looked at everyone's work here, everyone's website or their concept of their website and talked about some ideas of what everyone could write about. So everyone, you might have just been thinking about here's my product, I'm going to sell it, or here's my portfolio, I want to get a job. But that's not enough nowadays. It's not just enough to be a static website. It has to be dynamic. It has to be updated. The search engines like that. So if we're committing to once a month posting something new, um, that'll help your SEO. That'll help you get more traffic, help you get found. So we talked about ideas here about what, could, about what you could write about. If you want more ideas, I could help you, of course, one-on-one -on, -one on the lab or through email. But we looked at this, we did this here. Uh, anyone have any questions? Maybe more detail about any of this stuff or any ideas? Anything to share? So that document will still be available for you to, or it should still be available for you to log into and, and view to get those ideas.
So if we look at the... Hmm, actually, the link is a little bit different. What I'm going to do in the web design folder is put... See, on your desktop in the web design folder, I'm going to put in a, a new link there. CIS2... Uh, no, CIS257 uh, blog ideas. That PDF is the one with the old link. Yeah. Now in here in that folder, say it's 257 blog ideas, that's the link again back to that Word document so you can see it again. The, the link seems to have changed. Okay. Yeah. So that's when you when you go home, you can still access that that uh, that document that we all were looking at. Um, because if we go back to Blackboard now to, to look at, or if you look at the PDF file, the, if we look at the assignment more in detail, well, the ideas that we talked about right now are still available for you if you follow that link. And the actual, so the actual work is that on your GoDaddy um, WordPress site, you should complete this assignment. So you're going to write two blog posts on two different days. Remember, you can schedule this. So if you write it all today, you should schedule one for today and one for tomorrow. So you can get practice with that. But you're going to write two blog posts. One of them will be 100 words long, with one picture at least, and one link to another website, another relevant website. Don't just link to Google. That's worthless. Link to another website related to your website, another blog perhaps. Uh, You'll have to do a little searching to see what other websites are out there. Then the second post, a little bit longer, 150 words. That's same thing, one picture and one link. These are going to be different picture uh, and different link. forgot to write that there, but different picture and different link on the second blog post. And if you haven't done so yet, you want to send me an email with your address to your WordPress, to your GoDaddy WordPress site. Um, so that's up 10 points due in a week, two blog posts with a few words and a few pictures, uh, writing about the various ideas that I just, that we just talked about here in this document. You don't have to use any of these ideas, that's fine. You can write whatever you want, but if you were drawing a blank, here's some ideas. So the assignment is is there, our brainstorming is there, we're going to end the main lecture and have some lab time. Any yeah. general questions? It, it doesn't open like that. Uh, yeah, you have to copy that link and paste it in your web browser. Oh, okay. All right. So any other questions? We'll uh, be able to print in just a moment. So. Uh, that's what the assignment's going to be next week, do next week. Uh, a little bit of blogging, and that will ultimately help your SEO. So we'll end at this point, we'll have some lab time, and I'll be here until about 7.20 or 7.30 if you'd like to work or have questions.